You staying out there all day? I'm out there all day today. I don't know. I, I might just like stay in the back and then move up to the front in the uh, lunchtime. If you're not coming in, you know, I just I just come in for the companionship. Go peddle your bullshit <laughs> somewhere else. Store brand toasts don't even toast. It's like it's not even got a bread. So Angelo's gonna stay out the whole day, and Angelo's making oh shit! Oh, oh shit! What the fuck is wrong with you? Ah. Uh, you know what it is? Because you don't think about what you're doing. You just, you just, you just like, like what? Auto, auto mode? Yeah, you, you just exist. You just go through life. Like an amoeba. Yeah, pretty much. Just taking taking advantage of the situation around you, and if there's no good situation around you, you just. I still managed to survive. Yeah, like oh God, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I stirred my fucking coffee with a knife. So what do you make? There's no butter in there, you know. Unless you put it in there. I put it in there. Wow, holy shit. Easy there. Give me a little bit of credit for stuff. Oh my god. So what are you making, old chef, for the future? Uh, beef stew. That'll be ready tonight? Oh yeah. So what do you do, put it on low for eight hours? Eight hours. Part of the cows then. Huh? Part of the cows. Whatever then. part they couldn't make a steak at, but <laughs> like we're gonna put you the deer, whatever. But if it's not big enough to make a steak becomes fucking chop meat. It's gotta move the camera. So what'd you make? What'd you put in it? I can't tell you. Let me see. Salt. Heinz home style savory beef. Recipe secrets, beefy onion. What kind of soup is that? Mushroom? Curry mushroom soup? Yeah. There you have it. You put it in the cooker. For four hours on low. A little bit of garlic and a dough. Oh my god. <laughs> what was that first one you put in? Pepper? Yeah, salt, pepper, a little adobo. I think if I cut the butter with the knife, I stirred my milk or break the curse. My cousin Phil told me about that. He's like, Peter, you shouldn't be cutting. You shouldn't be, uh, put a cup of water to Was that a cup of water? It was just a little bit of water to get the list. A little bit of gravy out of the jar. Lipton recipe secrets. Beefy onion. Is that... Can you use something else or just you gotta use beefy onion? No, you gotta use beefy onion. Beefy onion. You gotta you heard that. Beefy onion. If you need a knife to stir that, I got one. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm debating whether I should stay in the front or the back. I'm really debating it. I guess I'm going to the back of the property.
hate walking in the woods when it's windy. I just spooked two does out of here. Hopefully there'll be more deer coming back. But I just spooked them with this wind. I guess they were better than they took off. I gotta go put the memory card in my camera because I thought it was on and it was off. So I took the card home and we looked at it. Oh, look, look, look. Right there. Right there, there's a doe in the field. I'm gonna go put the memory card in and hopefully these does will come back. Man, she already went in the woods. is bedded about maybe 40 yards in front of me. She's in between two trees. Her doe is 20 yards in front of me. Or four, I guess. I don't know. She's about maybe a year, less than a year old. How windy it is out there. So now I have the fawn bedded 15 yards in front of me, and mom is about maybe 25, 30 yards to the right of me bedded. I have two deers bedded around me. Look how windy it is, the tree is just moving. Spike came in, and uh, I guess they hung around for a little bit. They're eating acorns. It's really windy, so they're not moving much. But I was surprised to find that I had uh, a doe in front of me bedding. And there was also another doe about maybe 30 yards from me bedding. And uh, so two does and a spike. And I just saw a fawn go by. Okay. So I got out of this tree stand. Holy crap. What happened was the tree blew forward about eight inches. The uh, back teeth grabbed the tree. The tree, the back of the tree stand went up eight inches and then slid back to its original position. It felt like I was being bucked off this tree stand. So I'm off of this. I'm done with this wind. I'm going to go to my other tree stand. So I swapped tree stands. I'm in my, uh, I'm over the uh, food pot. This tree stand did the same thing. You see right here? That's how much it swayed. It actually swayed up here and went down. It's crazy. We got a lot of wind today. So I'm gonna pull my bow up and finish off the hunt here. I just killed. On this roof, you could see like there's a spider here. I just killed like 50 spiders up here. There, it's infested with spiders. That's another one. Look over here. There's two over here. See them? Fucking 
the spiders. See them right here? Hunting at its best. So I get to my other tree stand, right? And I get a call from the guy that's fixing my quad that it's fixed. Come pick it up. So I either leave it with him for another week or I grab all my shit and I go to Matt Cycle Center and pick it up. So I picked it up. I haven't tried it out. I'm going to wait till 6 o'clock tonight after uh, legal shooting hours are over. I think it's 6.25 tonight. So I'm back in my tree stand. And uh, it's infested with spiders. There must have been maybe a hundred spiders I killed already up there. And no, uh, I left when I got my quad. What the hell's that? I left the one and got my quad, and um, when I came back, there were more spiders up there, and I killed a whole bunch of them too. They keep like falling from up there and coming down and landing on you. It's disgusting. If my wife was here, she'd freak. There's something there. At first glance, it looked like a buck. I think it's a doe. I think it's still. What are the odds of this happening? What are the odds of this happening? I'm gonna zoom in with my camera. What are the odds of this happening? This morning, I had a, a deer bed down 15 yards from my tree stand, right? In the back of this property. So, tonight, I'm on Nebraska's field, right? And look at this. I don't know if... I don't know if you can see her, but there she is. She's bedded down in the brassicas. This is the second time a deer today decided to bed within shooting range of me. She's about guessing 25 yards away. But I can't shoot through these branches, and, and it's a doe. I'm not going to shoot. If you're watching this, share your story below of the most unique thing that ever happened to you while you were hunting. I just, I can't believe I had two deers, two deer, bed in front of me within shoot range in one day. I don't know what this is, but she sees something. It's a doe, but she sees something in the field. I don't know what she's looking at. The one that was bedding isn't there. Maybe there's a buck coming in. Wishful thinking on my part, right? Oh, something's over there. Something is coming in. Mm, it's another doe. Two does. Right in front of the clock. Look at that. That's the fourth deer to bed in front of me today. This morning, I had that little doe, and then mama doe behind her, both bedding by my tree stand. This afternoon, I had a doe bedding to the left of this tree stand in the field, and now the spike decides to sit down and bed within shooting range of me. Four deer bedding down in one day in front of my tree stand. I can't believe this. It's a wrap. 
so um, I don't know <laughs> I never seen four four does bed down well I'm sorry three does and a spike bed down so close to me in one day so going back to the house I'm gonna try my motorcycle see if it works <laughs>